Friday is over at Catalonia, and even though it is a brand new layout, the final result is something that we are all used to, and that is Max Verstappen was fastest overall. But behind him it was a very interesting session, as it was not what we have become used to. But what actually happened, and what did we learn? Well, that is what we're going to be talking about today, as we do a data analysis from a frantic Friday in Spain. Now, let's get to the video. As usual, we'll be talking about the likes of Ferrari, Red Bull, Mercedes and Aston Martin a little bit later on, so stick around for that. Formula 1 is back in Barcelona, and there is a brand new layout, and that layout has thrown up a lot of surprises, especially in what is usually a very tight midfield, but the question is, what teams impressed? And what teams were struggling? Well, one team that was struggling a lot, which is probably not a huge surprise, is the Williams team. As I mentioned in Monaco, Williams' biggest weakness is their lack of overall downforce, and the Catalonia circuit rewards a car with great downforce. And sadly for Williams, their car just does not have that. Both Albon and Sargent were bringing up the back end of the field as both of them and Lance Stroll were the only drivers who were more than one second off of the fastest lap time of the day. But where were they slower than the competition? Well to find out I have decided to compare the fastest lap of Albon to the fastest lap by the McLaren of Oscar Piastri to see who was stronger where. When we do, it becomes a lot more clear where the Williams is lacking. Their lack of downforce means that they cannot simply carry as much speed through some of the fast corners of the Barcelona circuit. This lack of being able to carry speed even affects them down the straight as they are not able to get the same slingshot down the pitch straight coming off of the final corner. This is why we can see such a large discrepancy between the two drivers on their fastest laps. This weekend, I feel it will be a weekend where the Williams team will be trying to simply survive the weekend before they move on to what should be a better Grand Prix weekend when F1 moves on to Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix next. Another team that was struggling this weekend is the Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri is in a similar situation to Williams where their lack of overall downforce is going to be holding them back. But in front of them is where the midfield starts to get a lot more exciting and certainly a bit more spicy. The midfield have this weekend, at least right now, closed up with the front runners, and we can see that with the fact that there are seven different teams in the top 10, as only Red Bull, Ferrari, and surprisingly Alpine have both their cars in the top 10. So with that in mind, what midfield runners are looking strongest so far this weekend? Well, the first obvious answer is of course Alpine. As I just mentioned, they are one of the only teams to have both drivers in the top 10, as Pierre Gasly was in P10 and Ocon was up in P5. Alpine have been fairly consistent this season when it comes to being one of the strongest teams out on track, but very surprisingly, they were not the fastest midfield team, even with Ocon being up in P5. That honour belongs to Nico Hülkenberg in the Haas. But the question is, where was Hülkenberg faster and how did he end up being the third fastest driver in FP2? Well, to find out, let's compare the laps of Esteban Ocon to Hülkenberg to see where Hülkenberg managed to make up all that time. Hülkenberg had an incredible sector one, which was faster than anyone else on circuit. This tells me that the Haas has brilliant straight line speed when using the DRS. With the DRS zone now coming off of a final fast corner, the DRS is now more effective than it used to be as the car is going down the straight at a higher speed and the DRS typically becomes more effective the higher the top speed due to there being more drag at a higher top speed and you can see that Hülkenberg has the edge all the way down the pitch straight and is in general faster down every straight section with Ocon being faster in the corners and braking zone probably down to the Alpine overall having a little bit more downforce than the Haas. The question is though, is this a one-off for the Haas team or is there real pace in the car? Only time will tell, but they could be in for a very good weekend provided they can keep the tyres in check for the Grand Prix. Another midfield driver who had a very good day is the Alfa Romeo of Valtteri Bottas and Bottas was able to beat his former teammate Lewis Hamilton today this is actually very interesting because what this lap comparison shows us is that the Mercedes is significantly faster than the Alfa Romeo. However, 
due to the lower downforce option that Lewis opted for, he has to brake a lot earlier than the finish driver. And because he has to brake so much earlier, he actually loses all of the time that he gains by being faster in a straight line. And we can see that when looking at the speed between the two drivers, Bottas is always later on the brakes. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. The majority of viewers are not currently subscribed to the channel, and if you're one of those, I would greatly appreciate it if you just tapped that little sub button. Now, let's get back to the video, and let's now take a look at the top four teams to see what we could learn, and let's start with Mercedes, since we are already talking about them. For Mercedes, we saw that Spain was another day of learning about their brand new design layout that they have opted for, and this could be why we saw a difference in downforce between Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. As I mentioned earlier, Lewis Hamilton had a lower downforce configuration, whereas George Russell opted for higher downforce, and this could be to see what option works best for them at this circuit. And when we compare the fastest lap between the two drivers, we can see clearly why George Russell's higher downforce is better. Hamilton is actually the faster driver over the majority of the lap. However, when it gets to Sector 3, we see that Lewis starts to lose out. This could be due to the soft tyre starting to give up on Lewis Hamilton towards the end of the lap, as it is overheating, and when it's overheating, you start to lose grip, and you would expect that with Lewis running less downforce. This slower downforce would lead to more sliding, and more sliding would lead to naturally there being a higher temperature, which leads to lower grip. And going into the final corner, you can see that Lewis simply cannot carry as much speed as his teammate George Russell, which is why you can see a big dip in top speed for Hamilton versus Russell. With the race potentially being a two-stop strategy, if it is dry at least, Mercedes might need to opt for the higher downforce option just to keep the tyres in check over a race stint. For Ferrari, Spain is a huge race for them as Ferrari are starting to move away from the bathtub side pod concept that they have been running since the start of 2022. And they are now running a configuration which is more in line with the likes of Aston Martin and Red Bull. To test the differences, both Leclerc and Sainz run different configurations during FP1, and you can see that when looking at all of their lap times from FP1, in general, Sainz was the faster driver than Leclerc. In FP2, when they had similar designs, it seems that the Ferraris were able to run incredibly close with very little to tell between the two drivers on their fastest laps. For Ferrari, they can be very happy with Friday. There were rumours going around also that they were much kinder on their tyres, which could be attributed to the new floor. If this is the case, Ferrari's biggest race issues may be a thing of the past, as they might be able to run at a higher pace during the race for longer than they have been able to in the past. Will they be able to do that though? Only time will tell and we will have to wait until Sunday to find out. For Aston Martin, their Ferrari was a tale of two halves once again as Fernando Alonso was the closest driver to Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. But his teammate Lance Stroll was the only driver outside of the Williams pair to lap over one second slower than Verstappen's fastest lap. So the question is then, where is Alonso faster at least today on Friday? Well, let's compare the lap times of the two drivers. Simply put, Alonso is faster everywhere, but where significantly does he have the biggest edge over his teammate? Well, from the data provided, once again by F1 Tempo, Alonso is faster going into Turn 4, probably because he's able to carry much more speed through Turn 3, and also at the uphill right-hander into the first DRS zone, Alonso is able to carry significantly more speed as he seemingly has much more confidence. And finally, going through the final corner, Alonso is a lot faster there as well. For Aston Martin, they cannot afford for this to continue, because Stroll going out in Q1 would be an absolute disaster for them. Hopefully, Stroll is able to go through the data and see where he can make up the time that he is currently losing. If not, then Aston Martin could be missing out on a golden opportunity 
to pull away from Mercedes as they are still trying to understand their new concept. And finally for Red Bull, Spain was business as usual for Max Verstappen and I fear that this weekend the team will be even further ahead of the competition. Max was able to get through the final two corners almost fully flat out as he only had a slight lift to go from 100% full throttle to 88%. Going through those final couple of corners, Red Bull has so much speed that they can carry that their rivals simply cannot carry, and that could be due to the fact that Red Bull are running a lot more rear downforce than their rivals. So, what did we learn from today's practice? Williams are really struggling this weekend due to the lack of downforce on their car. The midfield fight is incredibly close, especially between Haas and the Alpine. Aston Martin could be fighting with one hand tied behind their back if Stroll cannot up his game. And Ferrari's new upgrade does show great potential. So that is what we learned. But what will actually happen for the rest of the weekend? Well, we will just have to wait and find out. There is still rain in the air on Sunday. And after Monaco, we learn that anything can happen if it does rain. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.